Welcome back to another video in my China travel series. Between August and September of 2023, I had the opportunity to stay for a month in China. I spent the first two weeks sightseeing and also studying within Shanghai, which was absolutely amazing, before heading off for an overnight hike in Huangshan. In this video, travel with me to the next city on my itinerary, Nanjing. Its name in Chinese literally means Southern Capital, as Nanjing used to be the capital of several of China's dynasties, so it's got a lot of history, um, and I've always wanted to come here for that reason. In terms of actually getting to the city, uh, Nanjing does have one international airport, but as far as I'm aware, not a lot of airlines operate direct flights to the international airport in Nanjing. So if you are visiting the city, I think your best bet will be taking the train. If you're traveling from China's capital, I know that it looks quite far away on the map, but if you take the high-speed rail, it should only take you around three and a half hours to get there. Um, if you're traveling from Shanghai, it'll be a lot faster within only 19 minutes. You'll most likely arrive at South Railway Station, which is also the largest station in all of Asia that operates only high-speed trains. Speaking from experience, traveling via high-speed trains in China is actually super convenient and a lot cheaper than you would expect, so if you have this as an option, I would definitely recommend it over others. I was traveling to Nanjing from Huangshan, um, which took me a little bit over four hours, so I took the time to do some work for my thesis. Most Chinese trains will have three classes, being business class, first class, and then second class. You're basically guaranteed to receive snacks and free drinks if you buy a business class ticket, um, whereas in first class this seems to depend. So I've sat on first class trains before where I've gotten food and drinks, but also sat on first class ones where I didn't get anything. If you ever find yourself empty-handed and hungry or thirsty, there are always QR codes on the seats of the trains that you can actually scan to have um, things delivered to you as well. While I had some time to kill on the train, I decided to set up my metro card for Nanjing, so here I am doing it through Alipay. This provides you with a QR code that you can scan at the gates to the metro rather than buying a single ticket for each trip that you decide to take. It also means that you can carry around less cash with you because the cost of the trip will just be deducted out of your Alipay balance itself um, or from a card that you have connected to Alipay. As far as I'm aware, this also works for WeChat, but I prefer to do it through Alipay instead. This option was also available in most of the other cities that I traveled to. I decided to take a taxi from the station to the hotel that I was staying at because I didn't want to drag around my suitcase with me. Um, it cost around 40 RMB, which is like less than 10 Australian dollars. Um, and the traffic was okay, but as soon as you cross the city walls, which you're currently seeing now, it gets really, really congested. Also, my driver decided to drop me off in the middle of a busy intersection and I almost got hit by a car, which was not a very pleasant experience. <laughs> Last time that I've like had issues signing into a hotel or checking into a hotel so far with a foreign passport. The hotel that I stayed at was located really close to one of the tourist attractions and also on top of a metro station, uh, which was really important to me because I was only in the city for about two full days. As a foreigner in China, you're only allowed to stay in certain hotels that actually accept foreigners. You give them your passport when you're checking in and I think they help to register your like location with the local police. Um, but I don't know why, for some reason, at this hotel, it took a really long time and they started asking me questions like where I was born, like what city I was born in. I was just getting really confused, but I ended up being able to check in in the end. After dropping off my luggage at the hotel, I walked to the Qinghuai River area to explore a bit. The Qinghuai River runs next to the Confucius Temple um, and you can also get on a cruise here. The views are really beautiful at night but because there were so many people I was not bothered lining up um, but I can see why it's a very very popular tourist activity to do. 
There's a lot of touristy food and shopping options here as well, but I think the one thing that you'll definitely notice is the amount of people that are lining up outside of the duck shops. So Nanjing has an iconic dish called Yan Shui Ya or salted duck. There's a lot of people who line up and just like buy boxes and boxes of it to take away. However, my cousin recommends trying the dish in an actual restaurant instead. I eventually conceded and bought an overpriced watermelon juice but also took away some duck blood and vermicelli soup to have in my hotel. Um, this is also a dish that Nanjing is known for. So for dinner in Nanjing, Nanjing, sorry. Um, oh. There's oil everywhere, but I just ordered from a place that looks like it had a lot of customers. Um, I got a duck blood vermicelli soup. I think it's a famous dish here because I've been seeing it everywhere. So I don't know if you can see that. There's a lot of duck blood in there, but yeah, I don't know. It looks looks quite oily. Um, and I also got these osmanthus syrup and like. Tang yuan, bean tang yuan. What's tang yuan in English? They're like little soft balls of dough made with sticky rice flour, but I don't remember the English for them all of a sudden. Anyways, I'll show you that when I get around to it. Quick tour of the room. Um, got a double bed. That's my disgusting suitcase that you don't need to see, so that's the entrance. Um, the bathroom and the toilet is over here and there's like another sink over here the Room comes with a TV that I'm probably not gonna touch, but I don't know Um, the hotels on like my room is on level 5 which is a public not really public area But it's not just guest room. So there's um, a restaurant here and also a 24-hour laundry as well um, I don't really feel that comfortable That other people are able to come to this floor like at during all times of the day even if they're not staying here sorry even if they're not staying on this floor so we'll keep that in mind if i ever come back to ninjing but yeah this is the duck blood any talent but we're still entertaining people kendall jenner i'm not exactly sure what she does what's your talent it is a talent to have a brand that's really successful off of getting people to like when I woke up for my first full day in Nanjing, I literally could not walk because the day before I'd just gotten off the mountain from a two-day hike essentially. But thankfully the hotel that I stayed at was literally on top of a metro station that was also very well connected. Um, so I could get to where I wanted to go really quick. Our first stop of the day was Nanjing Museum, which is one of three biggest museums in China. Some tourist attractions in China will allow you to enter without a reservation, but Nanjing Museum is not one of them. When I was doing my research for this trip, I read that if you had a passport, you wouldn't be able to make a reservation and you would be able to instead pick up a free ticket at the service center, which is to the left after you enter the gates, um, which is what I did and I didn't have a reservation on the day of my actual visit. However, when I rocked up, the staff told me that this was no longer the case and that I would have to actually make a reservation through the application in WeChat. So the top option here is to just go into the museum and then out of these two options, the first one is normal tickets and the second one is for tickets um, for parents with kids and then it gives you a disclaimer. But once you click through it, um, these are the dates that are going to be available for you to select. Um, and then you have the choice of morning or afternoon sessions. And then here you just need to put in your details, which include uh, what document you're going to verify yourself with, so passport, and then your name, and then your passport number. There were so many different artifacts here on display that I really enjoyed looking at, so if you have the chance, I really, really recommend visiting this museum. I grabbed a quick coffee from the museum's cafe store before I headed off to the Zhongshan mountain area. 
Um, and I definitely bit off like way more than I could chew on this day because of how much walking there was involved. There are a lot of different attractions here. Um, I definitely recommend dedicating at least a full day to exploring the area and being a lot more prepared than I am because yeah my legs I don't know if you can tell but I was literally <laughs> about to collapse at any given moment because my legs were just so broken. I got off at the nearest subway station and decided to walk through the area that is known as Plum Blossom Valley um, but obviously they weren't in season so I didn't see any plum blossoms but <laughs> the area was very green and it was very very peaceful um, before I made my way through to the Ming Tomb. This is a section of the sacred way or the spirit way or the spirit path that leads to the actual tomb itself. The path itself is lined with pairs of stone statues of different animals such as lions, elephants, and I think I also saw um, tortoises as well. They're meant to act as a guardian of the tomb and essentially drive away any evil spirits. My next stop was Meiling Gong or Meiling Palace. It's a very large villa that was built by the chairman of the Chinese national government who then gifted it to his wife as a birthday present. There were just way too many stairs in that building for me to enjoy walking around and looking at everything so I got out of there pretty fast. I then did what I should have done from the very beginning which was hop on a tour bus to get to my next destination. The sightseeing bus only cost 10 RMB for one single trip which is around 2-3 to three Australian dollars and in my opinion it was super super worth it. Um, it was really great to feel the wind on your face as you flew by everyone else who was just walking. <laughs> so I took the sightseeing bus and made my way to the Sun Yat-sen mausoleum area. Um, before you get to the gates to enter into the park, there's an area with a lot of food and shopping as well. I picked up a snack called Mei Hua Gao or Plum Flower Cake. 
It's very crispy on the outside but is filled with a soft filling such as red bean or yam. I would really recommend trying this at least once if you're in Nanjing. Unfortunately, I didn't make it to the actual mausoleum area because it really felt like my legs were just going to give up underneath me. Um, and it also started raining halfway through the walk as well, so I decided to turn around and go back to the hotel and rest up before I had dinner with my cousin that night. I'm going to link a proper Nanjing itinerary below, so you can check out what else there is to see in Zhongshan Park. On the second day, I checked out of my hotel, but I left my suitcase there because I was going to catch an overnight train at around 9pm, um, and before that I still had a full day in the city. I got the duck blood soup again before I got on the metro. I then went to Lamindong, which is more of a historical area in southern Nanjing. Because it was raining so much, I didn't really want to walk around, so I grabbed a taxi to take me to a nearby snack store. This place was really recommended on Chinese social media, and I can definitely see why. These green snacks are called Qingtuan and they usually come with fillings like red bean paste or um, pork floss with salted egg yolk. They're really really savoury and super delicious. My last stop in the city was to visit the Nanjing Massacre Museum. It was a really sombre experience um, and it didn't feel appropriate to film inside the actual museum. But to give you a brief history, Nanjing was briefly occupied by the Japanese forces during World War II um, and a lot of wartime atrocities happened during that time of occupation. Um, the estimated death toll, they, you know, both sides dispute it, but the Chinese estimate it to be at 300,000. The massacre is obviously a very, very important part of Nanjing's history and its modern day development, so I would recommend visiting the museum if you can. Just be aware that given the nature of the museum, some of the exhibits are quite graphic and triggering. Anyways, that wraps up my two and a half days in Nanjing. Here I am at the proper railway station. I'm going to take an overnight train to Xi'an um, and I'll see you in the next vlog. Mm -hmm.